What's up, Lunker League? So I'm out here right now, local canal. Came out here to get the evening bite. I've got about two and a half hours or so just to make something happen. So gonna get out here. Let me show you my setup. So as you know, I've got the flambeau pack. It's got all my tackle in there. Got all my soft plastics in here, anything I would need. I got worms got worms in here I've got underneath that I've got a uh, creature baits and then I've got trailers if I throw a if I throw anything like a chatter bait over here I've got my rod runner many people ask about this you can get on, get it online it holds five rods and it's great for anybody that's on the bank because you never know what you're gonna need to throw as you can see the environment I'm in and you don't want to lay down your good equipment so we're going to go ahead and get it started let's go <laughs> First thing I want to try is this wacky rig Cinco. Uh, not a lot of wind out here, so the wind's supposed to kick up, so I want to give this a shot before that happens. Got that on my Insight Pro Advantage rod. Just trying some more different setups for you guys. This is a rod I've had for a while, but a great rod. I got this at Walmart for about 50 bucks. So just want to show you different setups. Definitely got to get closer to the edge with these. These are terrible casts, guys. I just don't want it to, to go all the way over to the other side. There we go. One of the things I neglect to do many times is there's always fish on this side. And I'm constantly throwing to the other side, so... I want to make a cast down here. Ooh. So I'm going to move down a little bit. here nice fish nice fish with a lot of stuff look at the inside of that mouth wow covered in leeches and everything so let's take a look all right Lost my hook. I mean, lost my worm. I just need to get this hook out. Come on. Come on, get yourself out. <sighs> All right. So let's get a nice little final look at it here. All right, even on the tongue, you see that? Ooh. All right, let's go. So I just saw some activity over here. I'm just not sure what it was. See, good rock in here. So there's definitely some bass on this side. It's like you're spooking them off mostly. So 
they got some stuff in the water over there. That looks like it's a fish. Uh, just a little one. Oh, there goes my worm. These fish get hooked good though. They get hooked really good. All right, nice little guy. And yeah, worms down there. All right, let's take a look. Let's shoot over here. And that's, that's definitely my fault there. There we go. Oh, he's a little guy. That's why. Oh, real little. Look at that. Little tiny spot. Hooked on the side of the mouth. Let's go ahead and get him out. Hopefully I can get this right out of him pretty easily. There we go. Little tiny spot. More like a carp than it did a bass. Good rock structure over here. There we go. That's, what is this? Oh, he's a little guy. All right. Come on. There we go. All right. Oh, and I just saw some activity over here just now. I just saw some activity right over there. Just that quick. All right, you. Ooh, got him on the outside of the mouth at that. Okay. So there we go. I just saw some quick activity over there. This guy looked like he was feeding. There we are. 
Cool. This is a nice one. There we go. Take a look at that one there. Not bad. Kind of far away from my scale. Let's get one more last look, y'all. Nice one. All right, let's let him go. Ooh, kind of a belly flop. What's up, Lunker League? So, getting on that evening bite tonight had a little bit of success. First, I started out with the Wacky Rig Senko. Uh, reason being, the wind was a little bit low, so I could go ahead and make that presentation weightless, which is how I like to do that the best. Um, one of the key things is within that canal, there is a strip of, of weeds, mostly in the middle. So it's very important that you get all the way to the edge, because if not, if you're a foot and a half or so, then your bait tends to float into the weeds. It doesn't get right down there where those fish tend to be hugging the outside there, uh, hugging right on the edges is what I've noticed. So have to make a great presentation. That's why you can see me in the video talking about a bad cast. That's what a bad cast means. I wasn't getting right up on that edge. Um, very important in this situation as to where the vegetation grows. And that many times is due to how the water flows through there. So there'll be pockets and, and different channels where those bass will be hiding out. I was using the Pro Advantage rod. That rod has a little bit more tip to it. It's considered a medium in some realms. And then with other uh, rod companies, that would be even considered a medium heavy. Um, it goes from 1 8 to three quarters of an ounce so for some that is a medium heavy it has a really good tip strong backbone but the reason i was using that is because that tip will allow uh, me to to get some flex in there with an open hook uh, many times i'm using a weightless hook and i really need to to drive that hook through the plastic and into the fish which is why i enjoy my heavier medium heavies, which is uh, what I normally run with. Those are rated from one quarter of an ounce to an ounce. So just a little bit stiffer tip, but I was able to get away with that on, on a Wacky Rig Cinco. I like to match my equipment to my technique. Um, in addition to that, uh, you saw my rod runner. That's uh, an incredible tool that I have that's very important to me. Um, helps me to carry quite a few rods. I don't have to bunch them up in my hand and I don't have to figure out what to do with my rods uh, when I'm just fishing one, because you can only fish one at a time uh, when you're actually using artificial lures and moving them around. And I don't have to lay m my setups in the dirt, which I hate because I'm a novice at cleaning up my reels and things. Um, after that, the wind picked up a little bit, and that's why I moved to the drop shot to just give me a little bit of weight. I generally run about a 1 8th to a 3 16th on my drop shot, and once that wind picks up, 
it messes with the placement. So you're throwing that lure out and when matched with the current within that canal, it starts to drift off your strike zone area and it makes it difficult to uh, pinpoint and find those fish. One of, the, one of the things I wanted to mention, which is very important, I am doing finesse techniques, but the way that I present those baits, especially out there, is more of a, a power technique. And what I mean by that is, it's similar to flipping and pitching. You're, you're flipping into or casting into one spot or particular area. You're working it a little bit. If you're not getting a bite, I, I reel it back up and I pitch out again. So I'm not working those things all the way back to me because as I mentioned in the middle of that channel, there's a lot of grass. So haven't had much success in the grass um, when I've used certain things such as a jig, uh, which I was throwing out there, but for some reason I wasn't filming. I believe I got a couple bites on a jig, but you also get a lot of trash. So to get the most presentations possible, which is why I go with things such as a Wacky Rig Zinco and the drop shot. The drop shot, once again, is an incredible tool for spot fishing. You can get it right into where you need it to go. You work it a little bit. If you're not getting a bite, you reel it back up and you're throwing it back out there again. So, had some good success. I actually got my larger fish on the drop shot. Um, got a good fish on the uh, Wacky Rig Cinco too as well. But again, the way I like to fish it is generally when there's less wind. If there is some wind, I'll go to a hook that has a uh, 1 16th weight on it because I don't want to affect the action too much and I don't want it diving down to the bottom into the grass and ruining that opportunity for a floating presentation which is what in my opinion the Wacky Rick Cinco is good for. So had a great time out there. If you've been here this long, please like and subscribe if you already haven't. Let's uh, get this movement going. Let's get as much likes as possible on these videos so that more people can see them and I can show them what I'm doing, my techniques, and how I fish these different waters. I have tried some moving baits out there. I got some great success um, on a lipless crankbait one day. So generally the technique out there that wins for me the most is going to be the Wacky Rig Cinco and the Drop Shot where I can drop into those holes and right around that structure as you can see I'm throwing to the roots and when you see my casts and you see them a little bit off the bank generally I can see the root structure down there and I'm throwing so it falls along that root structure and that's where I tend to get the most success in that canal the way that it works. Now every canal is different um, and many canals will lend to the opportunity for using moving baits, but I would definitely say um, within this past year, all these canals have accumulated a lot of vegetation. When I first started fishing these canals, uh, they were a lot more open. I could use my square bill crankbaits a lot easier. I wasn't pulling up a lot of gunk. I was able to make a lot more presentations. But when it comes to my square bills and my lipless, and even at times my chatterbait, I don't get to make a lot of presentations because I am cleaning my lure every cast. If you're not getting a fish, you're, you're cleaning your lure and it really slows down the process to where actually these techniques, the Wacky Rig Cinco and the Drop Shot become faster techniques. I can make a lot more presentations to those bass, find out where those bass are. Another key thing too is not necessarily looking for a spot per se, but looking for a lot of spots within that canal where you've had success where i've had a lot of success is along the root structures and where i can visibly see rocks there in the water and so what i do as i get to moving as you've seen um, in this video i move down the canal looking for similar structures 
Also, one of the key things as you've seen in the video is you pay attention to what's going on around you and many times I'll see fish feeding. If I see activity on the water, I throw to that activity and more often than not, I end up with a bite there within um, uh, one to three casts. If there's a swirl there, if there's a bass feeding, if I can get my presentation over in that general area, I can get bit. So that's one of the reasons I generally don't roll with music, headphones, because I'm paying attention to what's going on in that environment. And I could be casting over here and you hear that swirl, you look for those ripples, you reel up, you throw over there, and that can definitely be a fish for you, giving you a lot more success in these canals because you know exactly where that fish is. So appreciate you watching. Once again, like, subscribe, hit that bell notification for me, and hope to see you guys out there fishing. Make sure you, you take your time fishing out there, work those canals, figure out how each canal works. Each one has a different rhythm and function and different baits that work. And make sure you, you keep fishing no matter what. And as always, stay tuned for the next one.